and welcome back to American Sunrise. I'm Dr. Gina. Thanks for joining us this bright morning. We invite you to the conversation in Getter and Rumble, and you're not going to want to miss a minute because election 2024 is getting saucy. As election integrity remains a top concern for the GOP and the newly rebuilt RNC. With Welcome back to American Sunrise. I'm Dr. Gina. Thanks for joining us this bright morning. We invite you to the conversation in Getter and Rumble. And you're not going to want to miss a minute because election 2024 is getting saucy. As election integrity remains a top concern for the GOP and the newly rebuilt RNC with Laura Trump and Michael Watley at the helm, we showed you part one of David Brody's amazing sit-down interview with Laura Trump earlier in the show. David, tell us more about this portion, though of the interview. You went a little deeper here, got away from the family, which was beautiful and yeah. uh, very uh, just interesting to see. But uh, this this takes it to the next level. Well, yeah, it's deeper. It's also so critical to the election. How do they what are you concerned about uh, as we roll on here to Election Day? Yeah, well, listen, I think that the, the number one job that we have focused on at the RNC since the day I took office as the co-chair uh, alongside Michael Watley, the chairman, the one thing that, the, that uh, the chairman Watley and I focused on is election integrity. And we have worked overtime. We worked around the clock and we put together a huge team of people right now. As of last count, we had 200,000 volunteers to be poll watchers, poll workers, legal experts on the ground, work in the tabulation centers where the mail, ba mail ballots come back in. And, you know, I believe that if we have a free, fair and transparent election, Donald Trump will be victorious on November 5th. And I feel like we're going to shut it down early, David, because I think it's going to be such a huge vote for him that we're not even going to wait until the wee hours of the morning for people to call it. It will be an early call. But we've got to make sure we turn people out. And that's the message I hope people are getting across this country. And the other message I hope they're getting is not just that you have to get out and vote, but we want you to get out and vote early. Republicans traditionally like to wait until Election Day. And David, if we all wait until Election Day to go out and vote, it truly will be too late. We have done everything from our end at the RNC to make sure no matter if you're voting by mail, voting early or voting on Election Day, your vote will count in this election. We have eyes on the ground and people in the room every time a vote is cast and counted. And so we want people to go out early and then we want you to help us recruit people to get out and vote as well. If everyone out there goes and votes early and then makes it their mm -hmm. mission to do at least one or two, three, maybe four more people in their neighborhood that they see at church, their friends and family, get those people out to vote, that's the election. It's over, it's done, it's wrapped up. So we need to make sure that we get our voters out. I don't want anyone sitting this out thinking either their vote doesn't count. I don't want people sitting it out thinking, oh, you know, I don't have time to do this on election day. Go vote mm -hmm. early, get your vote banked, and then please help us recruit other people to get out and vote. Yeah, clearly it's all about enthusiasm. Everybody talks about undecided voters. Don't get me wrong, those are important, but they're minuscule compared to actually getting the base out uh, and, and voting. So let me get this straight. So the way I understand it, what you're saying is, because you talked about it early night, and once again, providing people are going to get out and vote uh, here, you're talking about potentially a blue wall sweep, maybe a sunbelt sweep, and, and places like Virginia are tightening, New Hampshire. You're talking about, I mean, this could be 312, 315, somewhere in there, and a potential yeah. electoral count if all goes great. Is that is that kind of the way you see it? Absolutely. I mean, the, the fact that we were able a couple months ago to add Minnesota and Virginia to our battleground state map speaks volumes mm -hmm. about the, the possibilities come election night. The RNC voter turnout. Let me read you uh, shockingly from The New York Times and other places. You say it's going well. You know what I'm going to say here. It says the RNC has done little to build a ground game in battleground states or promote voter registration. This is the narrative that they're talking about. They also say there's an outsourcing, which there is. There's an outsourcing from both campaigns, I'm assuming, uh, on the get out the vote campaign. So give me your sense of what the truth is, what the reality is on the RNC ground game to dispute some of those uh, reports that we have out there. 
Yeah, well, we have something called Trump Force 47, and that is our grassroots ground game operation. It's the same model, David, that we used during the primaries. And what did you see happen with Donald Trump during those primaries? He got more votes than any candidate in primary history in the United States. So what it is is really a, a method by which we ask you, as I just kind of detailed, we ask mm -hmm. people to go out in their areas and reach out to people. These are, are people we know lean right. We know they lean conservative but these are low propensity voters, which means they might not turn out every single election cycle. If we engage those voters, if we get them out to vote, that's that's the election, it's, it's over, it's done. Uh, any notion that we are not focused on a ground game, of course, is ridiculous. We have opened over 300 uh, campaign and GOP offices across the country. We have, as of last count, trained 22,000 Trump Force 47 captains. Those are the leaders in the areas around the country, the grassroots, on the ground leaders who are making sure that they give everybody information. Here are your five voters. Who are, here are your five voters. And the really great incentive that we've provided for people who want to join. By the way, it's TrumpForce47.com. If anybody wants to be part of this team, we would love to have you. We always need more. But if you convince 100 people to get out and vote in this election, then guess what? You come to Mar-a-Lago on election night and you come to our watch party with us. You are there alongside all of us in the Trump family watching as the results come in as, and watching as Donald Trump becomes the 47th president of the United States. I know you have a big legal team there at the RNC, Christina Bob and others. Uh, talk to me a little bit about some of these lawsuits, not specifically about the lawsuits, but this idea that a lot of the battles going on right now, it's been going on for a while yeah. to, to make sure there is a free and fair election. As a matter of fact, the North Carolina election board, as you know, you're a North Carolina thoroughbred, you know what I'm going to say, they just removed, what is it, almost a three quarters of a million names, uh, some dead people on the rolls, uh, duplicate registrations, uh, so, so those won't be there. So, so talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the lawsuits leading up to Election Day and how that's shaping the terrain to make it more fertile ground, Laura. Yeah, well, listen, you have to have the rules of the road set up. You can't go into and this election season. Now, I'll, I'll caveat this entire answer by saying it would be great if we had one day of voting. It would be great if we had voter ID yeah. across the country. And it would be great if we had paper ballots. And we can get back to that day. But right now, we're, we're dealt this hand, which means that we have early voting, you have mail voting. Sometimes it stretches for two months in some places across the country. But we need to make sure that we have voter rolls cleaned as you just referenced, what does that mean? That means that whenever you have states who are going to send things like mail ballots out, states like Michigan and Nevada, where they send you a mail ballot, whether or not you request it, we need to make sure that anyone who is getting a ballot is actually a legal citizen, can actually vote in our elections, and actually lives in the state and maybe hasn't been deceased or something, something else of that nature. So we've had a lot of big wins, but we have to get things set up properly so that when the first vote is cast in various states, states across the country, we are not questioning whether you have inactive voters. We're not questioning whether people right. are voting multiple times. You need to have it set up well in advance. And that is exactly what we've done from the RNC. As of last count, I think we have 107 lawsuits that we filed across the country to make sure that all of the proper things are in place. So when you distill all of it, how confident are you that election integrity has improved since 2020? Uh, because there's a lot of folks that are going, oh, gosh, election day comes, but the lawsuits will follow. And this could be craziness uh, in the month of November, or December. How confident are, are you as to some of those steps being taken here, Laura? Oh, incredibly confident. I mean, David, this has been my entire focus yeah. since March, since I, I became co-chair of the RNC, again, alongside Michael Watley. We want to make sure that we send a message loud and clear out there that if you're a person who is willing to cheat in our elections, we will find you, we'll track you down, and we'll prosecute you to the full extent of the law. You know, guys, there are a few things that stood out uh, from that interview. Uh, a couple of things. Number one, I don't think she thinks that there's going to be all of this big lawsuit stuff between November, uh, Election Day, and into December. I think she thinks it's going to be a blowout. I, she, I, she talked specifically about this being maybe a 320 electoral vote win and that there will not be the drama that we all expect. 
I thought that was interesting to me, Gina. Uh, what did you think of that and other things in the interview? Well, I love Laura Trump. Uh, we co-chaired yeah. Women for Trump together in 2020 election, as you know. Um, she's a good friend. Um, I, I mm -hmm. wish I had the confidence she has. Um, you know, she. <laughs> I, I just think the Democrats and their shenanigans are um, way deeper than we all think. I think we have to all be very aware. We cannot depend on Laura Trump, the right. RNC, or anyone else to do this for us. I think we all need to be standing at a poll on election day, overseeing these elections and reporting everything we can. Uh, that's that's how I feel about it. And I know Laura would agree with that. I'm not I'm not really saying anything counter to what she's saying. I just don't want to give mm -hmm. any perception of overconfidence here. I want to be very marked in, in my comments there, Terrence. I would just say kudos to the RNC, Laura included, and the Trump campaign in terms of being proactive and making sure that there are systems in place to watch these elections, to monitor what happens on election day, and then to be ready to respond. Because just seeing the problems and not being ready to respond, those are two very different things. So uh, the fact that they've got infrastructure in place to be able to respond, I think that's a positive thing. But uh, similar to Dr. Gina, I'm not as positive or optimistic uh, that this, this election is going to go as smoothly uh, as some uh, might think um, that there's that it's going to be without problems or that uh, the elections have been shored up. I'm not that optimistic. I'm not that positive about that particular well, part of it. Yeah. And what, what a great weapon in the arsenal, if you will, uh, for Republicans and specifically for Donald Trump to have, to have a daughter-in-law like that who is, and we know television, right? We know good TV people, but here's the thing. She's more than good TV people, right? In other words, she articulates the message really well on television, but here's the, here's the key difference. She actually backs it up with action and she's actually doing things substantial to make sure that things get done. She's a doer and not just a talker, if you will. She's a good talker, but she does more than that. And I, and I think that's important, Gina, here. She's got the whole kit and caboodle, as we like to say, back from 1942. Yeah. Well, I texted her uh, during the show to thank her uh, for doing mm -hmm. this amazing interview with you, David. I really thought it was a, just a commendable interview. You got to places in this that you just mm -hmm. don't see anchors go. And uh, I, I just am mm -hmm. just very, very thrilled uh, for this uh, this interview um, on her part and your part. So thank you for it. Well, you're welcome. I'll put it on my LinkedIn profile. Yes, <laughs> Terrence. Again, the interview is, is one thing. And yeah, it was a great interview. Uh, but I'm more focused on, I think I've been saying this for months now, the actions behind it. And it sounds to me like the Trump campaign and the RNC are finally unified um, and that the mm -hmm. focus is exclusively and squarely on making sure that this is a fair and secure election. And there's got to be safeguards in place to try to hold those accountable. And I think she ended the interview saying that, that if you cheat, we're going to hold you to account and we're going to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. And I think that's the message that's got to be consistent across all parties, not just the Republican Party. But right now, as we're hearing, it's the Republican Party that's saying that. Yeah, well, you got to have okay. the courts in place uh, to do it. Uh, so we're just uh, mm -hmm. going to have to pray for that. I really think there are about 64 components that need to take place in every election in every state. And that so far is not implemented. So that's my concern. Coming up, determined fifth graders help out their disabled classmates. That story ahead. But first, is left-leaning Saturday Night Live moving to the center? Or at least deciding to become funny again? We have two videos that may make you wonder. We are back right after this.